creation of as kula as usual we begin by praising the almighty allah alone and send the greatest peace and salutations upon his most beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam my dear viewers all our phone numbers should appear on the bar of your screen also your questions may be collected on the facebook page or the uh, youtube uh, channel we take your questions but they do not necessarily get answered on the same episode rather they are collected and they will be answered in the next episode or episodes inshallah in an orderly fashion without any further ado we have some callers waiting on the line our first caller is father sajid from bangladesh welcome to ask for sajid proceed on please assalamu alaikum shaykh Alaykum Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Sajid. How are you? Alhamdulillah, Shaykh. How are you? I'm doing great. Go ahead, Sajid. Uh, so, Shaykh, I, I had a query. I recently have noticed that uh, some people online tagging each other with some terms uh, like uh, Ikhwani, Makhali. I just wanted to know what these things mean. Uh, are these different sects or something else? Yes. Uh, I'm glad you brought up uh, this matter, uh, Sajid, and this is one of the means through which the Ummah is divided. I want to remind all the viewers that Allah Almighty said in the Quran, So for being Muslim is sufficient. For saying, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, and being a layman is sufficient. Learning the deen, studying extra studies, this is extra, this is plus, this is for yourself. What people do online where they dedicate their times to criticize, discredit, and dishonor others uh, is a waste of time and it is in the scale of their bad deeds. May the Almighty Allah protect us again as that. If I have a chance to spread what is good and to spread the correct belief of Islam, I should do that without uh, dedicating any of my time to label others or to divide the Ummah. So do not get sudden in any of these uh, uh, groups or any of these uh, messages or websites where you read it hardens your heart. It makes you feel bad about other Muslims, not for them, rather about them. And then it disconnects you from uh, your brothers and sisters and it gives you also the courage later on to criticize other Muslims and label them that is not the way of the Prophet I see somebody who's coming to the masjid and he prays Alhamdulillah he's a Muslim I hear somebody who says La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and does not do otherwise does not do what violates that Alhamdulillah he or she is a Muslim Assalamu alaikum Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, our next caller. Sister Fatima from Kenya. Welcome to Ask with Fatima. Hello, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Fatima. No, I have Go like two questions or three. Um, mm -hmm. uh, um, I was asking about um, uh, like four months ago I had a baby, alhamdulillah. But um, I was confused because uh, uh, during my labor time, I, I did not have any discharge. So I wanted to know, I was still praying, doing my prayers in the hospital. So I wanted to know, when do you stop as a woman? Immediately when you have labor or or do you have to see the blood or what? I think you've got the question, huh? Yeah, I did get the question. And then we, in the beginning, congratulate you, Fatima, for the new baby. May Allah make him or her um, comfort for your eyes, you and your spouse. And me, may Allah make them righteous. Uh, Fatima from Kenya is asking about the postpartum or the post delivery bleeding, which is in fiqh and sharia is known as nifas. And it is treated in the same way you treat the monthly period. With the monthly period, this is a major impurity. You don't pray, you don't fast, you don't have sexual relations, you don't enter the masjid, you don't hold the Quran with bare hands, you don't perform tawaf. And not doing any of that does not diminish your work because this is something that Allah has ordained upon you. And then you make up 
the fasting and you make up the tawaf after the purity but not the salah you are exempt from making up the salah due to the menses the postpartum leading in the mind of many women is 40 days and this is not necessarily true many women their bleeding after the delivery may last only for a couple days so once the blood ceases and you experience the clear discharge then you should perform ghusl and resume your prayers and everything as usual because you are in a state of tahara so where did the number 40 come from the number is the maximum and after 40 days even if you see bleeding it should be treated as an irregular eating unless if it points in your regular monthly period but your problem is a lot easier or your question is a lot easier but it needs to be tackled if the post delivery bleeding ceased a couple days a few days after the delivery then you should perform host and pray regularly and do everything as regular May Allah bless you, Fatima from Kenya. Assalamu alaikum, our next caller. Sister Tasneem from Oman. Tasneem, assalamu alaikum. So, wa alaikum salam, Sheikh, how are you? I'm doing great, Tasneem, thank you for asking. And you? Alhamdulillah. Sheikh, I have two questions. Okay, go ahead. Can you? Okay, the first is that when a woman gets a share in the property after her parents die can she say that mm -hmm. she does not want it without taking permission from her husband okay but That's when you say question. i don't want it uh, you mean you want to contribute it you want to donate it uh, to whom no to my uh, brothers or you know in the family whoever is there mm -hmm. that my share you all divide it they are in more need okay. than i so let me explain to you, sister, first name, uh, the answer to your question. Yeah. Every woman in Islam is entitled to possess whatever amount or property that is hers. So the inheritance is yours and you're absolutely free to dispense it in whichever way that is permissible, that is halal. So if you decide to give it all in charity, it's permissible. And no one has a say in that because it's your personal property. But it is worth consulting your spouse because you guys share bed. You guys are one. So <clears throat> it may leave a bit of taste. Uh, when you say, oh, I inherited half a million, but I give it all away in a charity. So you might disappoint your spouse because you didn't even consult them. But is it permissible? It's your money and it is permissible. But make sure when you give it in a charity, you decide how would you like to divide it among the ears. Some of your brothers may be more worthy than others. So you collect your share in order to avoid conflicts. And after you collect your share, you give it to this person or to that person, including any of your brothers whom you like to get. Thank you, Tasneem from Oman. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dana, from case A, Dana, welcome to ask for that, Dana. Hello? Yeah, you're live on ask for that, Dana. Go ahead. Oh, I, 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 I'm, I'm watching the TV and I, I don't, uh, <laughs> Well, you need to use your handset, so we we'll communicate over the phone. Go ahead, Dana. Oh, okay, now I hear, okay. All right. Assalamu alaikum wa wa barakatuh. I have a question. I was watching well, one of the uh, other uh, Islamic programs on the TV, and mm. there were several sheikhs that were, that, that were on, and uh, one of the sheikhs uh, had said that women were cursed if they go to the graveyard. And I was actually appalled when I heard that because... Um, one of the prophet's wives by Asia, she went to the graveyard. How can okay. she be cursed? Yeah. You know, yeah. this is really Dana, confusing. And Dana, do you have another question? None of the sheikhs said anything. Everyone was numb. I understand. Know? I got your question. I got your question. Some do you have another question? 
you explain this further for me? Thank you. Okay, I have a question for you. Dana? Okay, seems like uh, Dana is not there anymore. So, the question should be, is it permissible for women to visit the graveyard? I've answered this question quite a few times, and I said, yes, it is permissible. And I've used many references, including what Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, said to the Prophet Sallallahu O Prophet of Allah, whenever I visit the graveyard, what should I say? So he taught her a supplication, which we all as Muslims follow. So whenever we visit the graveyard, we say, Assalamu alaikum, ahl al diyari min al mu'mineen wal muslimin, wa inna insha'Allahu bikum lahiqoon, nas'alullah lana wa lakum al afiyah. This supplication we learned from Aisha, radiyallahu anha. And I also quoted the incident of the woman who was mourning the death of her son at the graveyard and the Prophet ﷺ advised her to be patient and she wasn't. Then when she was told it was the messenger of Allah, she came running to his house to apologize. He said patience should be observed at the, uh, uh, the when the shark strikes first. And he never said you're not allowed to visit the graveyard. And the hukm is for both men and women. Yes, there have been some ahadith in the beginning banning not only women, but also men from visiting the graveyard for other than the purpose of burying the dead because of the old traditions of doing a lot of violations at the graveyard of calling upon the dead instead of calling upon Allah, complaining to them, seeking help from them, and so on. But when Muslims were mature in faith, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I had forbidden you earlier from visiting the graveyard, now I'm commanding you to frequently visit the graveyard since it should remind you of death. That benefits both men and women. But when women go to the graveyard, you should keep in mind there are etiquettes that they should observe, including putting on the proper hijab, they do not go to the graveyard alone by themselves because it's an abandoned area. And when they visit the graveyard, they just pray for the dead, ask Allah for forgiveness for them, and that's it. Thank you, Dana from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Our next caller, Fatima from the UK. Sister Fatima, welcome to Ask Buddha. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Okay. My husband and I have uh, uh, want to give our daughter uh, a name, but the name I want to give her is Sarah. I want to help mm. in the English way how to spell that name. I like the name. Then I want to know the meaning of Sarah. Then I want to know the proper spelling in English, please. Mm. Okay, Sarah is the way you pronounce the Arabic name of Sarah in English. Luckily, the spelling is going to be the same. So when you write on her birth certificate, S-A-R-A, -A, or if you want to add H, it's going to be pronounced in English as Sarah. But in Arabic, Sarah, and Sarah obviously is the name of the blessed wife of Prophet Ibrahim salam. And it is from surur, joy, delight, and happiness. And by the way, Sarah, may Allah be pleased with her, who is the most beautiful woman on earth. Assalamu alaikum. Our next caller. Salheen from Canada. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Ask with us, Salheen. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, thank you, Sheikh. Uh, my question You're is... You're welcome. Can you please give us... a uh, a comprehensive guideline to know when something is uh, when a gathering is pre-mixing and when it's not considered pre-mixing because uh, we can go to let's say for example a mall or like a grocery store and it's not pre-mixing but yeah. if we go to a gym or like a wedding for example it, it's uh, pre-mixing so how do we know when I got your question yes I got your question Sahih. okay now you listen to this 
there are places like the marketplaces, like the Haram, like Arafah, like Mina, like Muzdalifa. Uh, that's inevitable to have men and women in the same place, no doubt. So if I want to avoid that, that means you're not going to leave home. But I go and I lower my gaze. I go and my interaction with the other's agenda is within what is required. Whether she's a saleswoman, whether she, you are a salesperson and she's a buyer, okay, with utmost respect, then it is permissible. I'm invited to a dinner where all men and women sit together on the same table, my friends, wives, and my wife. I don't do that. Why don't I do that? Because it, it removes the barrier of uh, bashfulness and shamefulness or haya. So the interaction with the opposite gender should be limited to what is necessary or what is required. We don't just hang around. I don't hang around with my uh, friend's wife uh, or daughter and chat and uh, crack jokes and we laugh together and give each other a high five because, you know, we're friends. So that I should be avoided. I should avoid letting my wife interact with uh, people who are foreigners to us. They're not mahram. Likewise, I do not let myself do the same. So I say, Alhamdulillah, my wife is at home and she's religiously committed. But I myself go and I mingle with these women and we do what I mentioned earlier. That is not permissible. Allah Ta'ala A'la A'lam, Allah knows best. Our next caller, Assalamu Alaikum. Abu Abdul Rahman from Italy. Allahu Barakatu. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatu. Abu Abdul Rahman, welcome to Ask Huda. Okay, yes, yes. My question is similar to the man who asked question right now. The community I am from, almost all the gathering, name ceremony, marriage ceremony, all is free missing. So mm -hmm. if you say you cannot attend those ceremony, it means that even yourself, when you have some ceremony like this, nobody will not come there. So in this case, can you attend it for the sake of... Well, uh, I, I don't know to do any... Uh, Abu Abdul Rahman from Italy. My answer to the previous question is the same answer to your question. And every one of us should be protective to his family members, his wife, his children, and everyone who's living under his roof, including his younger siblings. Allah the Almighty said in Surah Al Tahrim, ayah number six, Ya ayyuha al-ladina amanu ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. As a family father, Allah has commanded me to protect myself and my family against the torment of Allah, against hellfire. Thank you, Abu Abdul Rahman from Italy. Assalamu alaikum, our next caller. Muhammad from the Philippines. Assalamu alaikum, Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ask Wada Muhammad. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah. Oh, my question, Sheikh, is uh, can I, uh, in loud congregational prayers, Sheikh, can a follower recite the Surah Al Fatiha if it, while the Imam is reciting a Surah? Okay, got your question. Muhammad's question, Muhammad from the Philippines, is a repetitive question, which is if I am ma'moom, a follower. And the Imam has recited Surah Al-Fatiha. What should I do as Ma'mu? The recitation of Surah Al-Fatiha is compulsory for every Muslim in every single raka'ah, whether you are an Imam or a Ma'mu. Is there an exception? Yes. If I join the Imam while he is in Ruku'ah, so I did recite Fatiha, but it still counts as raka'ah. If I join the Imam in the last segment of the standing position, uh, where I just said Allahu Akbar and before I say Alhamdulillah Ya Rabbil Alameen he went for Rukua so I'm exempt from reciting Surah Al-Fatiha if the Imam after reciting Surah Al-Fatiha leaves a gap where I can catch up and recite Surah Al-Fatiha I should 
But what is the Imam? Does not leave any gap and immediately he start reciting other surah. Then, in this case, my recommendation is to listen to the recitation of the Imam, and you're not blameworthy for not reciting Surah Al Fatiha. Then, because the standing position was fully occupied by the recitation of the Imam, and Allah Almighty stated in the Quran, there should be one reciter. At a time. Assalamu alaikum, our next caller. Muhammad from Norway. Assalamu alaikum, Muhammad. Yeah. Yeah. Wa Go ahead. Tashak, my, my question is uh, can I recite Surah uh, Can I recite uh, in Sayyid al Istighfar in uh, prayer, in, for example, in Sajda for seeking forgiveness? Yes, you may. You may recite any supplication in your sujood, even if it is prescribed to be recited at a certain time. One wanted to repent to Allah, he prayed two units with the intention of seeking forgiveness. And in sujood, he said, Allahumma anta rabbi, la ilaha illa anta, khalaqtani wa ana abiduka, all the way to the end of the master of seeking forgiveness supplication. That is permissible. Assalamu alaikum. Amina from Kenya. Welcome to ask with a sister Amina. Jazakallah khair. Amina from Kenya. Sheikh, my question is, inshallah we are starting Muharram and I know it's hmm. sunnah to, to, to fast on the 9th or 10th or 10th and on the 11th. But if I want to start from the 1st of Muharram, inshallah, to the 10th of Muharram, is it okay to fast or can it be better or I will fast only on the night and then and shukran thank you Amina from Kenya Amina from Kenya has brought up a very interesting question and we definitely need to know its answer right now inshallah in the sound hadith the messenger of Allah peace be upon him said the best of fasting the best of fasting after Ramadan is the fasting during the month of Muharram. And the Messenger of Allah ascribed this month to Allah. He said, Shahrullah in Muharram. Allah's month because of its sacredness. We all know that the entire time, the 12 months, and every week, and every day, and every second counts, it belongs to Allah. But when the Prophet says, Shahrullah, it reflects the honor, the greatness of this time. So in the hadith which is collected by, by Imam Muslim, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said the best fasting, voluntary, obviously, after Ramadan, is the fasting of Muharram. So what if I decide to fast every other day Muharram? Beautiful, because it is more virtuous. So I decided to fast for 10 days or 20 days or from the beginning of Muharram, voluntary, as long as you do not oblige yourself to do it, and as long as you do not circulate this as a means of, uh, it's a good thing to do, to fast for the first 10 days, like in the case of uh, Dhul Hijjah. No. If you wanna fast as much as you want on any month, it's permissible because it's simply voluntary. So if you wanna fast from the beginning of Muharram, where you witness also the 9th, the 10th, and the 11th, it is permissible. And this is, of course, an extra reward for you, Sister uh, Amina from Kenya. May Allah bless you and your family. Assalamu alaikum. Wasim from the UK. Welcome to Ask Huda. Wasim. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah khair and shaykh for all your time. Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and thank you for uh, tuning in and seeing. Go ahead. Sheikh, I wanted to ask you about the ritual of uh, dua uh, before going to bed. Uh, is the sunnah to cup the hands together first and then read the three quls um, and then blow uh, and wipe over the body? Or do you first blow into the hands, read the quls, and then wipe over the body? That's my question. Okay, if you're talking about 
certain supplications or recitations where upon reciting, you're going to use your hands to wipe over your body, such as the recitation of Al-Mu'awwidah, Qul huwa Allahu Ahad, and Al-Falaq, and Al-Nas, three times. So you gather both hands, and you recite in them. And after you finish the recitation, you blow like this three times. Then you use your hands to wipe over your face, over your head, over your chest, as far and as much as you can cover of your body. So the recitation will be while gathering your palms. Assalamu alaikum, our next caller, Rayan from the KSA, I believe. Rayan from the USA. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sheikh. I am good. How are you? Welcome to Ask Buddha Rayyan. I'm doing great, alhamdulillah. And you? I'm doing good, alhamdulillah, as well. I have uh, two questions. My first one is: yeah. so I am, I am, I am a beginner in uh, in learning in learning the Arabic language. I wanted you, if you can tell me the difference between sayyat and dunub, the word sayyat and dunub, and then my second question is is it haram to eat meat i mean is it haram to eat foods that were that was cooked with uh meat that was not slaughtered properly or, or like haram meat so you're saying haram and you're saying is it permissible to eat haram is this your question no 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 uh, obviously if okay it's, if, if it's haram obviously yeah, yeah. uh yeah. What, what i meant was the like the like the oils or the or the or cooked in the same like like uh, uh basically halal foods is it is is it permissible to eat halal foods that was cooked in the same pot or, or the same oil uh, as, I see. Uh, food of like course. Okay, yeah. I get your question. Yeah. Yeah. Now, linguistically, there are fine details of differentiating between sayyat, which is plural of sayyat, and the no, which is plural of them but simply both of them refer to sinning whether minor or major sins listen to what Allah Almighty says in Surah An-Nisa in tajtanimu kadaira ma tunhawna anhu nukaffir ankum sayyatikum wa nudakilkum mudakalan kareema so it sounds like kabair and sayyat. So kabair major sins versus sayyat. So it would look or sound like minor sins. Then Allah the Almighty stated in Surah Al Zumar, "Qul ya ibadi al-ladin al-labu ala anfusihim, ya ibadi al-ladin asrafu ala anfusihim la taqnatu min rahmatillah." So the Almighty Allah forgives all sins, whether major or minor. So when one of them is mentioned by itself, then it covers both. Okay? In the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, he said that the Prophet said, Man hamma بِسَيِّئَةٍ فَلَمْ يَعْمَلْهَا كَتَبَهَا اللَّهُ لَهُ حَاسَنَةً كَامِلًا Here in the hadith, the word سَيَّئَةٍ or a singular of سَيَّئَةٍ is mentioned by itself. So whoever intends to do a bad deed, let it be major or minor, it doesn't really matter. It's a bad deed. A big or a little tiny one. Then he decides not to do it, Allah the Almighty will still record it for him a good deed for not doing the sayyah. The oil or the butter or the grill upon which pork was cooked, it is not permissible, it is not permissible to use because definitely it has been mixed with other uh, uh, prohibited foods and it is not permissible to use it accordingly so because of being um, contaminated with what is forbidden it's not permissible to use assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh okay 
So my dear viewers, it's time to take a short break and we'll be back inshallah in a few minutes. Please stay tuned. Is Omar from the UK. Assalamu alaikum, Omar. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, now I hear you, Omar. Go ahead. Uh, how are you, Sheikh? You okay? Doing great. And you? Alhamdulillah, I'm okay. I want to ask a question. Sure. Uh, is it permissible to uh, fart and leave Sunnah? When I'm in school, I pray fart and I leave Sunnah. Is it permissible? Is it permissible to do what sunnah at school? Then I mean, when I'm in school, I pray what quickly and I leave sunnah. Is it permissible? Okay, I understand now. So whenever you are at school, you barely get to pray the fard namaz. And the sunnah, you postpone it until you get home. That is permissible. And by the way, that's why the Almighty Allah have made it so easy where if you only offer the form, that is acceptable, that is permissible. So the Sunnah, if you offer the Sunnah prayer, you will be awarded. This is like it enhances accepting your form the prayer. But if you skip it, you're not blameworthy. Let's say you are in, in a school, at the hospital, you have a, a clinic appointment, so you can barely pray the fard. That's perfectly fine. Then, if you want to make it up when you go home, it is permissible, by the way. Assalamu alaikum, our next caller. Brother Ali from Pakistan. Assalamu alaikum, Ali. Wa alaikum assalam, Dr. Salah. How are you, sir? So this time is from Pakistan. MashaAllah, you're all over the place. Yes, sir. Alhamdulillah, I am back home and uh, uh, beginning to work on my uh, new life here in Pakistan. I had two questions. The first question was the timing for Asr starts at 3.48 p.m. in Pakistan, at least the city that I am in. But the Jama prayer in the mosque happens at 5 p.m., uh, very late, uh, almost one hour after the Asr time starts. Now, my question to you is, mm. if I'm praying in the masjid, of course, I wait for the 5 p.m. and then pray in the masjid. But can I pray mm. before that on my own? So that was one question. And the second question is, uh, now that you are here, some uh, events are happening. People are inviting you to their weddings and everything. And some weddings you go to, uh, they are playing the music. So what does one do? You know, does one get up and leave? Because, you know, music, we're not supposed to listen to it. Uh, or one does stay there because some uh, relatives are very sensitive and uh, they take offense if you don't attend their wedding. So wh how does one go about this tricky situation? Okay, Ali, thank you for calling in. And in the beginning, uh, we all pray for you. May Allah grant you success with you with your new business. I mean, uh, secondly, according to the Hanafi Madhab, the time for us is different than the time for us at the uh, schools of thoughts or the vast majority of the scholars, which is basically an hour later, or maybe an hour and 15 minutes. When the Adhan is called, you're free to pray. So if you want to wait until you offer the Jama'ah, that is perfectly fine because you still pray Asr on time, by the way. So if you wait until you pray the Asr in the Masjid in Pakistan, that Jama'ah, 27 times greater, a reward, and it's permissible to wait. If you want to pray, like with your family members at home or if you are at work, it's permissible once the Adhan has been called because Al-Adhan in Arabic, Lughatan, Al-I'lam, an announcement of entering the time. It's time to pray. And that's why the Mastura at home, when they hear the Adhan, they can go ahead and pray right away. So it is permissible accordingly. Whenever I'm invited to a wedding or to a party, I ask, you know, how's it going to be like? Is it mixed? dancing you have singers female singers and music when they say yeah it's gonna be a lot of fun bro i say well i'm afraid that allah has blessed us with countless blessings and now we are changing him with many sense so i do apologize i will not be able to attend and i make a point to tell the host i'm not attending for this reason why because pleasing the Almighty Allah, even if 
that may end up to displease or upset human beings, number one, Allah will be pleased with you and will make everyone whom you are worried about their feeling will be also pleased with you because you put Allah first. You give preference to the commandment of Allah Almighty. On the day of judgment, everyone would say, myself, myself, and disown others. I keep that in my mind. I don't really care what people would say about me because I grew a long beer. I don't really care what people say about my wife when she's wearing the cob and I'm traveling across North America or Europe. I care about what Allah the Almighty is pleased with. Thank you, Ali. Assalamu alaikum, our next caller. Namra from Pakistan. Welcome to Ask with the Namra. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ask with Thank, thank you so much, Sheikh. Sheikh, my husband is living in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Yes, and okay. he wants to live uh, me with his parents and his young brother. We have differences, and I'm not ready to live with his parents. I'm asking him to come here to back, come let back me, to Pakistan. Let, 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 let me let me make certain I understood you correctly. Your husband is living in the KSA and he wants you to live with his younger brother. Am I correct? Living in Saudi Arabia? I can't hear you properly. Now, can you hear me? Ye yes, Nambra? yes, now I can hear you. Okay. Yes, so Sheikh, my husband, husband is, is living, living in, in Saudi K Arabia. Hmm. And, and he, he wants, wants to you to live, live with his live younger brother. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And he wants me to live okay. with his parents and and the younger brother. And I am okay. not ready to live with them because we have some differences. They don't they don't feed me properly and my daughter. Okay. And it's been and three uh, months now. Do you, do you have another place to live in, like with your parents, for instance? I didn't understand you. Your voice is not clear. I got I got your question, Namra. Brothers and sisters, every wife is entitled for her own place. And no wife is required to live with the illos. And I know this is a very cultural matter and I'm going to receive a lot of criticism for that after the episode. But as I said before, I'm here to represent the correct and the sound sunnah, irrespective and uh, regardless of what people might think of it. Because this is our role. Every woman is entitled for an independent place, everyone according to their capacity. Our sister says her husband is living in KSA. She wants to live with, the, with her parents for the time being until he returns. He wants her to live with his younger brother and his in-laws. And she says that we're having trouble. They do not feed me, they mistreat me, and so on. You don't have to live there. And I would like to advise the brother who may be watching me right now, you should not force your wife to live there. Luckily, alhamdulillah, she has a family. She can stay with them by the time you're working there establish yourself and uh, be able to buy your little flat or house for you and your wife and your kids. May Allah bless you all and grant your husband success and may Allah protect your marriage. Assalamu alaikum our next caller. Muhammad from India welcome to ask for the Muhammad. Umu Muhammad sorry. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Umm Muhammad. How are you? I'm doing great, and you? Alhamdulillah, I'm fine too. Sheikh, my question is, I heard that parents should spend on their children equally, and if they gift, then they should gift them equally. So my question here is, 
my father took me for hajj a few years ago while i was single and he was my only mahram i also had a sister who was married at the time so i want to know if my father should take her also for uh, hajj or uh, should he spend for uh, give her money uh, for her to perform hajj because he spend on me um that was my first question okay and my second question is my father gave us uh, some jewelry to both of us and uh, uh since i'm single he pays uh, zakat on my jewelry so should he give the equivalent amount to my sister also even though she doesn't have to pay zakat but uh, i i just want to clarify this doubt as well um Thank you. and uh, my third from question India. yeah go ahead okay my third question is uh, just simple um after uh, every salah we recite the azkar subhanallah alhamdulillah and allah akbar so uh, if you are praying zuhur so after every sunnah also should we recite this or uh, can we recite it after uh, praying all the 12 rakats in zuhur once only once or should we make the zikr after every two uh, like uh, the sunnah prayer and the fard of zuhur so that's my question you you are talking about the sealing of the prayer the recitation of ayat al kursi and tasbih tahmid and takbir am i correct yeah 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 okay so we got three questions from ummu muhammad from india the first question is concerning being just in treating your children yes indeed we have a sound hadith now narrated by an numan ibn bashir in this respect when his father intended to give him a property and he wanted the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to bear witness to that So he asked him if he has any children other than a normal. He said yes. He said, "Did you give each and every one of them similar to what you gave to a normal?" He said no. So he refused to bear witness to that and said, "This is falsehood." There are some exceptions, obviously, when somebody have children at different ages. So my uh, eldest child, I put them to school, college. Then I send them abroad to finish their masters and PhD, and I supported them financially. And now Allah bless me with a baby child. So if I want to give the child uh, buy him a watch, I have to buy the eldest as well because this one I have spent a lot of money on him. So if I want to secure the future of this person by putting some money on a side for their education, it's permissible. Now. Your dad took you for Hajj. May Allah bless him. Your sister is married. Does he have to take your sister for Hajj if he has the means? It would be better if he either take her for Hajj or give her an amount of money in order to help her husband to take her for Hajj. So this way, he is perfectly fair. Your dad voluntarily pays as a kajju on your board. Masha Allah, this is perfectly fine in Hanafi Madhab. So does he have to give your sister a similar amount? It will if the amount is considerable like it is in thousands, yes he should. Why? Because this is atiyah and it is in thousands, he should give your sisters or the rest of his children uh likewise. Barakallahu feekum um Muhammad uh from India. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahmed from Malaysia. Welcome to ask uh, with Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to ask with Ahmed. Uh okay, I am uh, from Bangladesh and currently living in Malaysia. I'm working uh in an Italian bar where they serve pork and alcohol. So uh is it permissible for me to work long time or I should find some other jobs? Can you put some light uh, on inshallah. it? Inshallah. And I mean, you did, like didn't question. spare any haram, but you worked in it. So you're working in an Italian bar. They sell liquor and beer, and they serve pork. What else? Do, do they have a strip club as well? You know, this this job is definitely forbidden, and the earning out of the job, Ahmed, is absolutely haram and forbidden. You better. immediately today before tomorrow look for another job a cab driver a fast food restaurant halal restaurant and luckily you're living in malaysia there are a lot of openings and in the food and beverages there are a lot of restaurants thousands and thousands in kl by itself 
halal. So you don't have an excuse to live in an Italian bar and serve something that Allah has forbidden. In the sound hadith, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ إِذَا حَرَّمَ شَيْئًا حَرَّمَ ثَمَنًا Whenever Allah forbids anything, then its price is forbidden as well. May Allah feed us all from lawful earning. Thank you, Ahmed from Malaysia. And do me a favor. Next episode will be on Tuesday. I want you to call me and say, Sheikh, I quit. And now, alhamdulillah, I'm looking for a halal job or I already found a halal job. Brothers and sisters, pray for your brother Ahmed. And may Allah make it easy for him to find a halal job. Assalamu alaikum, our next caller. Yaqub from the USA. Mahbub. Assalamu alaikum, can you hear me, Mahbub? Yeah, wa alaikum assalam. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, welcome to Ask Huda. Go ahead, brother. Okay, so I read in the Sahih Bukhari, there's a hadith that says a person can be good all his life and just before he dies at the end, something happens, he starts acting like the people of the hellfire and he enters hellfire, whereas the person yeah. may be good bad all his life, something happens and yeah. he acts like the people of the heaven and gets in the heaven. So how does that contradict, uh, how is the fairness being done in that case? It's very fair, and this is what we see every day, uh, my respected brother Mahbub. Don't we see people who are very righteous and they became evil? Don't we see people who are living in the Harameen land and they were wearing hijab and now they drink liquor and they were uh, revealing clothes? Wasn't it very choice, brother? Wasn't it? Did anyone force them to leave what is good and to do what is bad? No. but. The other narration of the hadith says, nas. They were good as it appears to people, but from inside, they were anxiously waiting for the earliest opportunity to change. I'm living in a culture where I feel like in prison. Oh, I have to pray. The women have to wear hijab. I have to uh, deal with halal. But if you give me the chance, I'm going to change. Okay, you're given the chance. You're given the free choice. I personally, once in the flight, two Arab guys boarded the flight and I was sitting nearby them. I overheard them and they did not know I knew Arabic. Overheard them talking to each other. No more commitment, now freedom. We're going to the USA, we're going to drink, we're going to commit adultery, we're going to do everything as we wish. And guess what? When they landed at the airport, they were both arrested by the immigration and they were deported. So before reaching there, they were contemplating, I'm going to do everything wrong. So there are some people like that. But Allah, the most just, the most merciful, the most kind, the most forgiveness, his tradition is, if one is living a righteous life and leading a good life, Allah will help him to remain steadfast until he sets his foot in paradise. Read, if you wish, ayah number 69 of Surah Al-Ankabut, in which the Almighty Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِيْنَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ So those who struggle for Allah's sake, those who try to be good, Allah promises to continue to guide them and keep them steadfast. May Allah make us among them. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Next caller. Umm Abdul Rahman from Norway. Assalamu alaikum, sister Umm Abdul Rahman. Jazakallah khair wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, akhi. Welcome to ask you Um, Shukran. Thank you so much. My question is um, first, I want to. To make dua for my Quran teacher, he passed away this week. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. May Allah have mercy on him. May Allah admit him to the highest place in paradise. Amen. Isakallah khair. Every second minute, while I'm in salat or while I'm at the home or doing something, he's coming in my mind. And I, if I do sadaqa for 
for him that it goes to him for my parents absolutely yes parents. absolutely yes he doesn't have to be related to you he was your Quranic teacher further and my children as far as my give, children uh, your children okay so whatever you give in a charity and your intention is to extend the word to this person he will reach him he will definitely reach him by the leave of Allah I would like to also share the good news with you that my mashallah your children now have been taught how to read Quran because of him every time they recite Quran they will be rewarded and he will receive a similar word the messenger of Allah peace be upon him said in the sound hadith al-khayri lahu mislu ajri fa'ili may Allah bless his soul and may Allah have mercy on all of us my dear viewers, it was a pleasure to be with you once again for As for the Life. And until tomorrow, same time, I leave you all in the care of Allah. I will say this, and I will say this, and I will say Mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance And in your deen allow me to advance Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Allah is my heart's speech Your mercy is what I beseech Thank you.